Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the noise removal tools in Lightroom and how to use them to remove noise in your photos. Before we get started with looking at the noise removal tools in Lightroom, let's have a look and see what noise actually even looks like. I'm just going to zoom in here to the towers in this photo and we have a couple of things here that are of interest. One of them is chromatic aberration. That's the colors around the edge in the towers here. Now we're not going to look at that in this particular video, but when you see colors around edges in an image, that's called chromatic aberration and you can remove it with tools. But what we're seeing in the towers themselves is what we've come here to look at and that is noise. And here you can see that the colors in the tower, they should be sort of uniform blue, but they're actually a sort of mottly color. There's lots of different colored pixels, pink and green and blue, which all sort of blend together into giving it a sort of bluey look, but there's definitely noise here. And this is called color noise. It's called color noise because it's multicolored pixels in an area where you would expect to see flat color. Now the other kind of noise that you'll see is a, just a plain monochromatic sort of grainy noise. There's a little bit of it through here. Not quite as obvious as the color noise, but it's called just regular noise. You'll more easily identify that as just being areas of sort of grain in the image, but it's more likely to be a sort of single color, a dark sort of grain, rather than being lots of colored pixels. But you can see through here there's color noise. This image was shot in uh, late afternoon and it was a very dark image and it's been processed and it's not unusual to see quite a bit of noise coming into an image like this. To fix the noise, the best thing to do is to zoom in to see the noise because you really need to see what it is that you're trying to fix so that you can fix it. So I'm going to zoom into the noise here and then the noise removal tools that we're going to use are in the detail panel. That's the same panel as has the sharpening. Now we can click here and click on an area of noise so that we can preview it in that little window. The little window is a one-to-one -one view of the noise. But here I've got an even larger zoom. I've probably got a three to one zoom. It's just a little bit easier for me to see things with a really high zoom. Before we go to work removing the noise in the image, it's really important to understand the effect of noise removal. The noise removal tools in any program are going to have a smoothening effect on the image. And so the downside, if you like, is that you're going to lose some detail in the image. So this will always be a compromise. You're going to compromise between getting rid of noise and losing detail. And somewhere in the middle there, you've got to strike a happy balance. So you don't want to overdo these tools. If you get a fix, you want to take what you can get, not go, well, the slider was good at 50, so let's just wind it up to 100 because that's not going to give you a satisfactory effect because you're going to end up flattening and smoothing other areas of the image that you didn't have to flatten or smooth. Now this is color noise. You may find that the slider is already set at something. If you've got raw images, sometimes you'll find that the slider will be set at 25 because that's a really good point for color noise removal. And you can see that adjusting it to 25 for me has removed the color noise. Now it's probably a little bit too high, so I'm going to back this off until I get to the sweet point because I don't want to lose all the detail here. I just want to find the point at which I'm getting rid of the color noise but not losing detail. So I'm thinking for this image somewhere around seven to eight is probably the sweet spot. Now I have two other sliders. I have a detail slider and a smoothness slider. Now the detail slider can be used to bring back detail in the image if the color noise removal has removed that detail. But of course, what it's also going to do is it's going to run the risk of adding back noise into the image. So I don't need to do that with this. It's not having any desired effect, certainly in a positive direction, and it's not in a negative direction. So if I don't see any difference, I'm not going to use it. Smoothness is new to Lightroom 5, and what it allows you to do is to reduce some low frequency color mottling artifacts. So if you've still got artifacts in your color noise areas, you can try the smoothing to see if that smooths them out. 
and I suggest that you take it to SOAR 100 and have a look and see if that's a benefit and if not then you set it back to what you had in the first place. But if you find that at either end of the scale you're seeing something positive then go ahead and adjust it from the middle outwards just to see if you can get a better effect. For me it's not giving me any result at all. Now let's have a look at luminance noise because what we've still got here is luminance noise. We've got a sort of dark grey motley effect. We've got rid of the colour part of it but it's still luminance noise. So we can adjust the luminance noise slider across to smooth out these areas and again we're going to have that compromise between removing the noise and smoothing areas of the image that we don't want to smooth out. So do we don't want to take this any further than we have to and we probably don't want to take it all the way that perhaps it might suggest in this preview that we would want to. It won't matter if we have a bit of luminance noise here, we just don't want lots of it. And if you find that the luminance noise adjustment is removing detail in the image you can buy back some of the detail if we drag to the right we're going to add detail back into the image, if we drag to the left we're going to remove it and so again we're looking for a sweet spot here. If you find that you're losing detail around edges in the image then the contrast adjustment will sharpen up some of the edge detail and that might help to negate the problems that you're creating in the image by removing the luminance noise. So once you've got your setting let's just zoom back out again so that we can see what the image looked like before we did the adjustment. So I'm going to just disable the noise adjustment here by just clicking on this indicator and that removes the noise adjustment so we can see the noise as it was before we started. And now let's go ahead and turn back on noise reduction and we can see the change across the image in particular in this area here. Again let's do a before and after and it's going to have affected other areas of the image as well. Over here in the trees was quite a bit of colour noise. Let's click here so that we can see this tree area. I'm going to turn off the noise reduction and you can see here that there's noise everywhere. This is just littered with colour noise and luminance noise. And now let's reapply the noise reduction. And now we've got still some luminance noise but the colour noise has been removed. Now in addition to the noise reduction tools that are available in the detail panel there are also noise reduction features here in the graduated filter, the radial filter and the adjustment brush. I'm going to click to open the graduated filter and here is the noise reduction. Well it's actually a noise adding and a noise reduction because if you drag to the right you're reducing noise and if you drag to the left you're adding it. And here's the radial filter, it has the noise removal as well and so too does the adjustment brush. Let's have a look and see how we would fix up some additional noise using the adjustment brush. I'm going to select the adjustment brush and pin it down here. Now there are already some adjustments in place but we're just going to apply a new adjustment over the top of this area and I'm going to focus on the trees. And there's a tree here too. And let's just turn on the show selected mask overlay so we can see that the areas that we're selecting are these tree areas in the image and just make sure that I've made a reasonable selection here. I have auto mask turned on because that's going to help me make that selection. And again I can press alt if I want to go into eraser mode and just erase the brush selection from any of this portion of the image. I'm just going to make a reasonably simple mask there and now let's turn off the selected mask overlay and let's adjust the noise adjustment here. Now this is an all or nothing noise adjustment. It doesn't have any detail, it doesn't have any smoothness, it doesn't have any backing off and so all you get is noise reduction or no noise reduction and so you can see that wound up to a hundred it's way too much we're actually sort of fuzzing this out. But somewhere here between 
zero and a hundred is a sweet point for the noise in this area of the image and I'm thinking probably around 45 is pretty good and then let's click done and let's zoom into this area because I want to look at it before and after applying this adjustment brush to the image so let's just click on here and let's turn off the adjustment brush here and turn it back on again you can see that that was useful in removing some of the noise from the image and if I wanted to I could grab the pin for that brush and adjust it even more and I can also go and add additional adjustment brush options across the image if there were other areas of the image that I specifically wanted to remove noise in so you have noise removal tools in the detail panel and then that's also accessible through the graduated filter, the radial filter and the adjustment brush. So now you know how to identify both color noise and luminance noise. You know that removing noise is not a perfect thing and it does have implications for the sharpness and the detail in your image. And so now you can make a choice as to whether you remove noise and if you do remove it just how much removal you're going to do and you've got two tools that you can use to do it. I'm Helen Bradley thank you for joining me for this video tutorial look out for more of my video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released and visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.